welcome to Keys to Your Best Life. I am your host, Maggie Cavanaugh, and I am here today with a sister in Christ, Candace Kirkpatrick. Candace, welcome to the broadcast. I'm thrilled to be here, girl. I am thrilled <laughs> to have time with her because you guys just don't know. This woman is an actress. She is just incredible. Uh, if you have not seen her, I highly encourage you. And at the end of the show, we'll talk a little bit about some of the projects she's got going on. But today we want to talk to you about a very specific topic because we were talking recently at a function yes. about just how important it is to walk in your calling and know that it's never too late, you're never too old, and it's always in God's timing. So Candace, you are a perfect example of someone who was doing what you were called to do, but yet you understood the season of life that you were in, pulled back, and then went back later to complete the calling. So what was that like? Can you explain to them maybe or tell us a little bit about that? Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started out, as you, you said, I started out doing theater when I was four. And I got a bachelor's in it, a master's in it. I was working professionally before I graduated from school, moved to New York City, told the world, look here, I've made it. Aren't you so glad I'm here with 30,000 other people, women, just 30,000 other women who look like me th with the same dream and passion. But the Lord was faithful. He, I got an agent. I was working. I was traveling around the world doing theater, including Ukraine and London and other places. And then I was also getting small parts in TV and film. But at the same time, even though I had become a Christian at age six, I grew, you know, it's so funny. This is, a, this is a rabbit trail, but anyway. We'll go. My, <laughs> my mom's like, why did you move to New York City? The den of iniquity, okay? <laughs> but I actually grew more as a disciple and follower of Christ mm. because people there, I mean, there's something you can do 24 seven in New York City. Yes. You don't go to- City that never sleeps. Exactly. You don't go to church for social reasons. Right. Okay, I need to clarify that. So you go there because you are intentional. And my instructors were CEOs of companies. They were major architects, all that kind of stuff. But they had degrees in Hebrew, in Aramaic. Wow. And, and um, so I was steeped in the word of God. I grew exponentially in my walk and That's in incredible. my faith. Yes, I, I'm not kidding you. But during that time, back to my story now, the Lord opened my eyes to the content of what I was doing, mm. okay? Yeah. So it was like I saw it with like, the scales had been removed and I saw it afresh and I could thought, oh yeah, I love my role, but what is the takeaway message? Ooh. And I was also getting, as I grew in my walk with the Lord, there's a, that whole sanctification process as you know is ongoing. Yes, it is. So as I was growing in my walk, he started revealing this doesn't honor me. Mm. And he called me out of the industry. Wow. At the same time, I was getting so much pushback from my agents and casting directors. You need to separate your religion from your work, or if you won't do it, somebody else will. And wow. I just told you 30,000 people just in my category alone. Wow. Any of them would do it. But the Lord, after much prayer, I felt the Lord called me out of the industry. And at the time I was newly married and I said, Lord God, give me a heart for whatever it is you want me to do. Yes. So I began having children. I began teaching women's Bible studies. I began teaching young marrieds, uh, college age students. And then later on, I started writing and directing for schools and churches. What a blessing to them to have you there with your experience. Well, I think, you know, they said, if. You know, if you want to grow in your faith, become a teacher. Because to me, <laughs> yes. you you cannot pretend that you understand the Word That's of God. That's right. Amen. You need to be in it. If I want to be able to teach somebody, I need to know it. So I grew mm. so much in my faith and in my walk and in my love for the Lord and in His Word. Wow. Then fast forward, my we moved a lot because of my husband's work. And I wanted to be so intentional in my kids' lives. So yes. I put my career away and I didn't think, cause when I prayed, dear God, let me have a greater hunger for you, the expulsive power of a greater affection that it would expel everything else and my love for him would be the greatest. I'm gonna stop you right there. Say that again, because that is so powerful. It's from the 1700 Thomas Chalmers. 
Wow. And he wrote about the expulsive power of a greater affection. You know, sometimes we think we can get rid of sins in our lives if we just muster up the strength and try do it. harder. Try yeah. harder, just yeah. a lot more effort. Well, he said, no, it's mm. when you have a greater affection for something else, it will expel those. Amen. And so, I truly believe that. I believe the more we fall in love with Christ, the less we fall away yes. or fall out of love with the things of this world. So that's powerful. But it's also, Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's but so it's good. also but that, that void. Yes. You know that void in your heart? Yes. If we don't fill it with something greater, then the enemy comes in and fills it with all kinds of things that take us away. Yes. Away from who we are, away from who God's called us to be, all of that. So true. I'm sorry. I didn't mean don't, to, to don't derail apologize. you. Don't No. <laughs> Listen, y'all, this is why I love her. We can just go on for days talking about this, <laughs> this stuff. <is> so true. <laughs> so I, I was called out, but then while I moved to these other places, I would start writing and directing for the churches. I would write m musicals, stage plays, skits, dramas, vacation Bible school, and then when my children, my kids are very close in age, but when my kids reached high school, the bottom two are in high school, my first one was in college, I felt the Lord call me back into the industry. Mm. But he made it very clear that what I was doing was for an audience of one, that whatever I did was to bring honor and glory to him. Amen. I was doing an interview earlier this week, and that was the thing that really just struck me for the first time, because when I got to New York City, I said, look out world, I'm here, I've made it. Right, right. It was all about me, 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 me. Sure. Okay, and I was even, had he not called me out, no telling how far I oh, would have my. compromised yeah. my walk. So it could be a Because it happens. I, yes, I know people yes, that it's happened to. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I'm thankful. People are like, oh, do you have any regrets? And I'm like, no. No. Because I would not probably have liked the person I had become. Mm, wow. So when he called me back and I felt with him, I said, Lord, I just give myself to you. And that's what I were to talk about. You're never too late. That's right. You're never too old. You're never too young. Mm. Um, we posted the other day this 100-year-old man who was just baptized, who's like, now I can't wait to do all these incredible things for the it's Lord. Incredible, you incredible. Know, 100. It's incredible. It's exciting. Well, it's also, you know, there's small children in the scripture in Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you yes, because you are young. Age. That's right. But set an example for the believer. And, you know, Amen. but anyway, I was thinking about it, you know, Moses was 80 when he right? was called to lead a nation into the promised land. But get this, God didn't waste those 80 years. No, he didn't. Those 80 years were all training for what Moses was going Amen. to do, you know? Um, uh, who else? Thinking about Abraham, he was 75 when he was called to leave his country and start a new life to leave idolatry, the mm -hmm. worship of yep. idols which his, his forefathers were involved in. And follow the Lord God. And he didn't have the scriptures. That's right. He was listening to, to God. To the voice of God. Yes. A hundred when he had Isaac. Yes. Ninety when Sarah had Isaac. Yes. And then there is um, eight, um, Noah who was 500 when he was almost 500 called, I want you to build an ark. Right. You know? <laughs> and John the Baptist, I mean, John the apostle. Yes. You think about it. You know, a lot of the other apostles had been martyred at this yes. point. Okay. And they thought they were going to get rid of old John by sending him away, exiled to Patmos yes. Island. And it was there. He gets a download. Yes. <laughs> he has all these divine revelations from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the book of Revelation has been read by billions of people. Yes. So there's also women in the Bible and stuff like that. But my thing is, God sees our heart. He mm. does not look at our date of birth. That's right. You there is I mean? no, he's, he's no. outside of time and space. Yes. And age is nothing. And you know, so if you're watching this broadcast and you just tuned in, we're talking about it's never too old. You're never too old and it's never too late because Amen. God has a purpose and a plan. And I think about my own life, you know, for so, I can tell you, Candace, personally, I would beat myself up sometimes because I would think I wasted so much of my oh. life. I thought, you know, man, the first half of my life was so messed up and so wasted and so much pain and anguish and all that stuff. And then I finally got a revelation one day when I was praying and the Lord's like, 
your your testimony yeah, reaches amen. so many people amen. because you were involved in so much junk, a lot of junk that he's delivered me out of. Hallelujah. <laughs> and yet none of that was wasted. That's the whole point. It was not wasted. Not an Please. ounce, not a day, not a tear, nothing yes. because he's been able to use it all. And so it's so amazing how he does that. And I'm thinking about all the years that you poured into families specifically within the church yes. and with production quality production, because I know your skill set, I know your education <laughs> background, and I know your spirit of excellence that you operate in. So it's like God used your gifts and your talents while he was preparing you to relaunch you. Yes. For such a time as this, yes. if you will, to be able to reach so many people now with the things that you do. Listen, y'all, she's brilliant. You have got to check out some <laughs> of her stuff, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you a, a, bill. a Vimno later, a Vimno bill. request now, I'm just kidding. But really, Candace, when you think about it, we are, you were talking about the people in the Bible. Right. And how we, so much more, we have the written word of God, the inspired, yes, true, exactly. written word of God to yes. lead and guide us, but yet we still go, huh? So how is that? So I know that you are an avid, and I'm going to pig trail here just for a minute. You're an avid prayer warrior. Amen. And I know you spend countless hours of prayers. You prayed for me, my family, and I absolutely love Amen. that. But um, if you could just take a moment and share how maybe your prayers when you were raising your kids has brought you to now and how you see the hand of God over oh, those wow. years. Oh, but still, oh my goodness, that's a whole nother episode. It is another episode. Is we another gonna episode. have to have her back, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that is another episode because I, I started my, I, when a family tragedy hit in 2018 mm. is when I started my prayer closet. And I had been involved in prayer ministries at different schools, Moms in Touch, Moms in Prayers, Mops, and all that kind of stuff for a decade at least before that. And then I realized I was like just touching the tip of the iceberg mm. in prayer. You know, it was like, Lord, you know, bless their friendships, you know, and the exam they have today, and you know, these kind of encounters. Very surface type prayers. But that's in what a it sense. felt like. Yeah. When, okay. when Not saying they weren't effective. No, I'm sure they were. God heard every one of them, but He does. Know. That's yeah. a good point. He yes. does hear every prayer. Yes. No prayer is also goes unheard, as that's it right. says in the scripture. Amen. But it was then that God brought me to my face, laying mm. prostrate on my, in my closet, my little, my closet is this big. People think, oh, you got a big prayer closet. No, it's this big. I just shove <laughs> my clothes and I just get in there and I just cry out mm. to the Lord about the transformation of their heart and of their soul. Yes. Because everything else is irrelevant. That's right. You know, God has equipped every, every one of you with a gift and a purpose and yes. a calling he has placed on your life. And the thing is, like you said, we can wail, we can begrudge, we can dread, oh, I didn't use this or I wasted the time, or we can pick up, rise up and say, okay, Lord, beginning today, use, use me up. Use everything in me for your yes. glory. And that's the thing, we all have different callings. Yes. You know, there's people you are going to meet that I will never encounter. That's and right. you are the hands and feet of Christ to them. Amen. You are. They may not enter a church door unless they see the love of Christ being poured out mm. through you, through whatever you are doing. It doesn't matter if you're a, a stay-at-home mom and you're in the grocery store. Right. If you're an eye doctor, my eye doctor has scriptures everywhere. Like even when you're testing your eyes, you're reading you know, scriptures. <laughs> Oh, it's great it. <laughs> to see what your focus is everywhere. You know, yes. you can be a light yes. because we are living in a fallen and broken world that we are desperately needs the, because need it goes it. back to the said, yes. we're filling that hole with everything else. Absolutely. Yes. And as long as we're doing that, we're never really going to truly walk in our calling. We're going to do what we think in our own Amen. mind is good. Yes. And I know there has been seasons and times like, for, here's an example. I was a single mom, I needed provision, and I thought, oh, I have, you know, I've got to get my degree. Not it was a bad idea, but I needed my degree to, you know, to make right. more money. But I went to work in corporate America. And now, while I was there, even though 
I was still going through so much. God used me there doing marketplace ministry. I had a Bible study. We had prayer and, and things like that. So whatever it is you're doing, if you feel like I can't walk in my calling because I have this job or I, right. I can't walk in this calling because my kids are little. You see how Candace, right. you used that time when they were little to connect with other moms. Yes. And also and, too, when I was directing at schools and churches, I would put them in. I'd bring them with me. I would use them. I was teaching them. I mean, them. Yes, and the way they should go. And prayerfully, yes. they will all just grow in their passion for Him. I love but it. the scripture that I came upon that I wanted to share with you, that yes. it's like no matter how many times you read the Bible, it says His word is new every morning. It's so true. Well, this is like, okay, I hadn't even thought of it, but it says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of mm. our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. Wow. They will still stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is mm. upright. Where is that at? That is in Psalm 92, 12 through 15. And what version are you reading out of today? It's the NIV. The NIV. Okay, gotcha. But it's just like they will still bear fruit in old age. They will still stay fresh and green because God is a, an incredible redeemer. Yes, he is. You know, yes, he doesn't he waste anything. And when you were talking about... All of that's time in corporate America. He yeah. did not oh waste gosh. it because look at all the skill sets you have for all of the ministries that, I that you were then. doing. Yes. Yes. But he also, even I was saying, he doesn't waste the garbage, all of the pain, the yes. suffering, the trauma, any of it. He uses it, as I say, as a bridge so that somebody else can walk from death to life. Mm, that's so okay? good. So but good. I want to share something else that I learned, and this ties into my career. So, you know, I'm, I'm on this TV series called Vindication, okay? Oh, listen, let me just stop for just one moment and put in a <laughs> plug, okay? Vindication is an incredible, incredible crime drama. And people are always saying stuff like, I can't find anything good to watch on TV. This is so good, you will be hooked. You can watch season one, season two, uh, get Pure Flix. It's super cheap, and you will never regret uh, that because it's such clean, pure entertainment. But in addition to that, you can also get it on Amazon as well. So or, go ahead. Or Redeem TV. Or Redeem TV. Yes, Redeem TV. Yes. So good. And tell Pure Flix to release season three, which yes, they've had waiting. for months. Yes, we're all <laughs> We're patiently waiting. Patiently. And or not so patient. No, not yeah, not, I'm not patient. I'm uh. you know, like every day going, win, win. Candace came in on season two, but season one, she prayed the whole thing through fruition, which was so cool. Another God story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> another, story. another episode, but it's gonna be a powerful. Oh. So go ahead about vindication. Go well, ahead. this is what I wanna say. You know, I was saying he doesn't waste the the, the brokenness and oh, the pain amen. and the sorrow. I mean, he really does use it. And so I true. know I could give you hundreds of stories of my own life for that. Yes. Yes. But he also doesn't waste the good times and the joy mm. that you've experienced. So I'm going to give away a little plot point of season two for those of you who have not watched Vindication. Spoiler alert. Spoiler it's alert. It's okay. It's out. Okay. It's Jared's not going to text us and tell us. No. Like, it's okay. No. It's safe. Okay. Go ahead. But <laughs> there is an episode in season two, episode five. It's called The Game of Life. Mm. And what's funny about it <laughs> it's a week and a week before we went into production, okay, there's this football scene in the in the episode. So good. And I was harassing Jared, who's O'Flaherty, who's the writer, director, producer, everything. And so I was like, too. oh, come on, put me, and I was saying, put me in coach, put me in coach. And he was <laughs> saying, yes, your character, I play the role of Janet, your character would be on the sideline with her clipboard making notes and making sure everybody's doing with their job. And I'm like, no, no, put me in the game. Put me in the game. And he's like, Candace, why would I do that? And I told him, and this is why it's a God story. I told him, I said, Jared, I grew up playing football my entire life on a boy's team. Because, I've seen your arm. It is yes. no joke. I, I said, I love the sport. Okay, I love it. And he's like, that's very nice. Thank you. I'm like, okay. So a week or so before filming that, the person who was supposed to be one of the players in the episode had an event come up and they absolutely could not be in the show. Oh, wow. I did not know this story. This, this is, is good. This is a God story. So... 
Jared calls me up on a Saturday, and it's like a week before filming. He said, okay, Candace, you told me you play football. Do you really play football? And I said, <laughs> yes, Jared, I play football, and I love football. And he says, I want you to go create me a highlight reel. Oh, it my had goodness. just finished raining. I get my husband, I get some neighbors, and I'm like, we're going to play football. So we go out <laughs> and play football, and I'm running hundreds of yards down, making these passes and things like that, and, and catches and things... And then I send it to Jared, and he says, you really do play football. <laughs> and then he said, pray for me. I've got to completely rewrite the script before we go into filming. He rewrote it oh. a week before. <laughs> so my character gets all of this wonderful time. He didn't allow me to play as fully as Candace played. He had my character playing it, so she was Which is very quirky compared to most of your roles. Yes, yes. Which is I not love her. Candace playing. But... <laughs> I was like, Jared, I thought you were going to let me really, you know, but anyway. You wanted to show off your skills. Yeah, it was, again, <laughs> it went back to the flesh of Candace and not about, uh, you know, moving the story along and God's story. But anyway, I share that because months and months earlier to that, somebody was helping me update my resume and they said, take football off your resume. No one would ever, ever hire you to play football. Oh. And I said, I really love the game. I love playing. I, I said, let me keep it on there. And they were like, no, take it off. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. And I left it on there. <laughs> but it was between me and God, okay? Yes. Something between God and I. Mm. And so when he, I got this call, this script is being rewritten for your character wow. to go and play that. Mm. I just started weeping. And it was like God saying, Candace. I see you. Yes. And it's not just the junk I'm redeeming. Mm. I see the things that bring you joy. fun and joy and silliness and all of that because he's oh. such a good and loving and merciful God. Amen. So, so resourceful. You know, so <laughs> yes. resourceful. And I love the fact that in Ecclesiastic it talks about a time and a season for everything under heaven. Amen. And so the season for you... Uh, coming in to doing this production even well, was a God thing. Yes. And so I, I don't even know if we have time to go into that story, but you know, listen, y'all, she was praying for, Jared didn't even know you were an actress, did he? No, I didn't tell him. <laughs> I just <laughs> saw an episode of what he was doing and I said, I'm committing to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And I became friends with him on social media and I would send him prayers at ridiculous hours of the night, one in the morning, six in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Whenever I was up and the Lord brought him to mind, I would send a prayer. And he said to me, well, long story short, he saw me on a talk show like eight months later. And he goes, that's the girl that's been praying for me? <laughs> I had no idea because I didn't tell him because I have a scripture besides all the, how God views work in my um, closet. I also have God as my agent and God as my manager. Oh, man, that's good. And it's because I, I'm not good. I'm sorry. I'm not good at schmoozing. You know, you're, right. no, here's my card. Here's my thing. I don't want to do that. You I want to build yes. authentic relationships people, with people where we're reciprocally helping so and encouraging and spurring each other forward. Yes. And, and I pray, Lord, that you will bring me to whatever it is you want to bring me to. So when he said, okay, I don't want to bring you in, Candace, for just one episode. I want to see if I can create a character to bring you in. And normally, I play very serious, dramatic roles. Yes. But since the pandemic, the Lord has given me some of the craziest, <laughs> quirkiest roles. I love the roles because it, because you get to see both sides. And to be honest, it really shows your gifting so much because you can walk in that, you know, being funny and quirky and fun and also very dramatic. So I absolutely <laughs> love it. I, I, I just want to real quick talk about the what you did with Tina Gallo over the pandemic now that you mentioned it, because that was a demonstration. So here's two beautiful women of God who love the Lord are both gifted in their talents, yet they are never, she never, Tina never laid her stand. Well, she laid down Hollywood and now has the school, but you guys did the whole episode of Karen. 
Kathy with or a Kathy. K. Kathy, Kathy with but a K. They were basically, Why am I saying Karen? No, because they're basically two two Karens. Yes, yeah. They're older. Yeah. They are two Karens. Karens as like you, the kind of Karen that you would talk about. Yes. But yes, and, and so in that, I got to see a side of you that I had not seen before, and I was and just I falling over. And I never get to play a meanie poo. I know. I was like, that's just. My brain can't even wrap around that. So if you're feeling like your brain can't wrap around walking in your gifting or calling at this season in your life, stop, pray. Yes. Get someone to pray with you yes. because God is writing your story. And just like Jared wrote Candace into not an episode, but a whole series, she is an amazing character on that. Oh. And again, you guys got to go check out Vindication as well as many other pieces. Google this lady because she's got so much stuff out there. You wow. would love it. <laughs> we don't even have enough time to go over everything she's done and continues to do. But it's a perfect example mm -hmm. of it's never too late. Yes, it's never too late. And I absolutely and love it. It is. Okay, fast forward now. I, Tina and I just became, you know, really acquainted, you know, at the time we did that. And she had left Hollywood. She had been on a soap opera and she said, I need to get new material. In the pandemic, everything was shut, and she said, let's create something. So that's what we created was this, and we both trained uh, in method acting. I was going to say, I thought you guys knew each other from that, no. because I knew you both had the same type of training in New we York. We had all this. Well, she was uh, there so a decade common. before me. Wow. But we all had the same, the same training. But yes. she said, let's just do something. I really want to do something. So we did that. I love her. But just fast forward, because of that, we have now perform we have now formed a production team of amazing women called Trilight Pictures. Oh my goodness. The film that so exciting. is written is extraordinary. We are praying for funding so that we can go into production of this. Oh, that's so exciting. But again, all of these are God stories. I yes. never thought I would form a production company. You sure. Know? Right. I'm so knew. over my head. But that's when, you know, when I am weak, he is strong yes. and my, his grace is sufficient. So yes. like you said, we don't want to rely on our strength. Amen. We want it to be the spirit. So praying for funding of that so we can go into that. I love but that. But it's just God is continually, he opens doors. And it's just, you know, saying, again, let go of the past. Start afresh, God, today. I give you my life today. Use me however you want. Whatever encounter, in the grocery store, wherever you're going. Yes, amen. A Lowe's, you know, wherever you're headed, you know, use me today, however. Or show me you know, what it is, and he will surprise you beyond yes. your wildest imaginations. <laughs> and, it's, and it's never just tame. No. No. Using you in and out of season and yes. so forth. So I am so excited about what you're doing with Tina because I absolutely adore her. She is amazing. She actually has the, uh, a school in the Nashville area. Yes. So if you're a student and you need good training, she I is recommend your girl. It highly. Tina Gallo, Google her. And I think it's called <laughs> the Nashville Nash School of Method, Method Acting. Acting. Yes. And it's here in Nashville. And yes. you will get quality training. Yes. Where you're not also worrying about the content. So I really want to. Yes, highlight that. Absolutely. You know, my little worship leader from our Godfident movement is a student of hers now. It makes Yay. me so happy because I know that she's being mentored by one of the best and someone that also is walking in their gifting and is not letting any date or time that they were born right. to, to dictate what they do. So Candace, I want to thank you for being here. Tell the audience how can they get a hold of you if they're looking at uh, your website? You can look at my website. You can go into IMDB and just yes. put in Candace Kirkpatrick. You can go on Facebook. You can go on to Instagram. I'm now learning that. See, you're never yes. too old to learn. <laughs> That's right. So, I, and um, more than anything, I pray that whatever I do just points you to Christ because amen. it's all about him anyway. Amen. Well, we want to thank you. We know you can do a lot of things with your time, but hanging out with us has been so much fun for her and I, and we <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. And I'll have to have her back because I do want her to come back and talk more about prayer. Because if you need a prayer answer, this is your girl to pray. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time on Keys to Your Best Life. <laughs>